Okay, this is going to be a quick introduction to Google Earth for trip planning purposes. Um, this video will just be basics of Google Earth, and then I'll make another video actually drawing a route and fine-tuning it um, and the intention of using it for a trip. Uh, you can download Google Earth for free. You might see a bunch of extra layers when you open it up, and these are things you can turn off. I generally do turn them off just to clean up my workspace. I like this to be as clean as possible. I do actually use the photos layer pretty frequently. I like to use it to explore areas, maybe identify something that I'd like to see. These photos are hosted by Panoramio, and Google bought Panoramio and then killed it or moved these photos into Google Maps, but not in a way that's easy to see where they're from. Um, so you can, another uh, useful tour, tool here is Map Sites. This is where a lot of the Panoramio users moved over to. So you might be able to find pictures of the area that you're interested in exploring here on map sites. Go ahead and turn those off just to clean things up. Um, basic navigation within Google Earth on the keyboard, arrow keys, pans, uh, shift in the arrow keys will either rotate or tilt. And I can use the plus or minus to zoom. It's a pretty slow zoom. So if I want a faster zoom on a trackpad, I can use a two finger slide if I have a mouse, I can use the, the wheel. Um, if my Google Earth is, is responding more quick, quickly than yours, it might be internet connection, but it, it might also be something you can update in your preferences. Navigation, mouse wheel, so changing the speed here, fly to speed. Uh, so those are ways to make this a little bit snappier. You can also do all this same manipulation up here. I, I don't. I think this is more confusing and I lose control over the view that I want so I'm used to the keyboard. Uh, a couple shortcut keys that I use all the time is um, U to untilt and N to go back to north. So that just resets my field of view, something I'm more familiar with. As far as the display, you can see um, Lat long down here. This elevation is actually pretty cool, so you can just get a rough sense. Here it's 2895. Here are the peaks, 5500. Um, so I use that all the time. It's more useful to have a topo map, and you can pull in a topo layer. So go to a browser. I'm in Alaska, so I'll do Alaska topo KML. And there are a few different providers of these topo maps. Chino one is the snappiest in Alaska. Uh, although they just lost funding for this service, so I'm not sure if this is going to be available much longer. So I've got that KML, I just pop it into Google Earth, and now I've got Topo. Notice that it came in in this temporary places folder, and what that means is that if I close Google Earth and open it again, it won't be here anymore. So you probably want to move this up into my places to store it. I've already got one there, so I'm just going to go ahead and delete what I just imported. Now I haven't downloaded all of these maps. I've just pulled in the service that when I'm at a certain uh, zoom level here, the service calls, in this case Gina, uh, and Gina then returns these tiles. Um, and you saw there was a bunch of there were a bunch of topo maps outside of this area that I'm interested in. So you might be able to speed up your processing time a little bit by going through this nest, identifying some that you don't need, and just getting rid of them. I don't even know what I deleted because I don't see anything disappearing on the map. Okay, there's all of Russia. I'm going to delete Russia. This might be overkill. If your processor is working fine, it's not worth going through all those. A couple of cool things about the topos. Give this a second to pull in. Uh, it drapes over the landscape, so as I as I change my perspective, the topo reflects that. Um, these are some of those warnings I was mentioning about Gina not being able to provide this imagery much longer. Um, another cool thing is that I can I can select this folder and then open up this transparency filter and just show a little bit of topo if I want, none, all. This is useful for me when I want to get place names. So here I can still read that this is the Hayes glacier. Um, but for the most part I just leave this here and I just toggle on and off. 
once it's got the tiles in this field of view, they're cached, and so the toggling is a lot faster. Okay, I'll leave that, leave that off for now. North, to go back to north, view to untilt, get my bearings. Okay, another cool uh, feature within Google Earth, notice that if I zoom in far enough, I'm looking down in this corner, if I zoom in far enough, at some point there, a timestamp shows up, 2010. And with that timestamp, you hover over it, it says, click to see historical imagery from 2010. I can also get to the historical imagery under view, historical imagery. It's both going to be the same place. So what this does is it allows me to compare, in this case, a February 2017 image to, there's a September image, July 2010 image, 2007 image, wow, okay, major difference in ice coverage here. So I use this to get a sense for snow on glaciers and maybe vegetation. If I'm going to do a trip in March, but the imagery is from September, if I'm lucky, there might be some more imagery and I can find something that's closer to March. Another cool feature here under the view is uh, sun. So I'll go up to view, sun. And what this is doing is showing me the sun on the slopes throughout the day. I haven't actually used this, but I could imagine using it so you have a ski line in mind and you're curious when the sun is going to hit it. Um, or if you want to compare in Alaska with December to March, the difference in, in sun. This is just showing me one day, but I can zoom out. Now I'm looking at a full month, zoom out a full year, so this is probably going to be a bit of a strobe light. Nice. Okay, I'm going to kill that. Uh, north, until that's it. Uh, that's the basics of Google Earth. Um, I'll make another video about drawing routes, and we'll be using these tools for that. Okay.